Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So as some of you guys know if you've been following me on Insta for the last month I actually came out with a paper pattern in cooperation with Buddha. So I am in the August edition of the Buddha style magazine right here. As you can see right here I'm featured with this design that I created right here. I also got to model it which is super cute. I love how the dress came to life and how it looks like and that is what we're going to do together, sew together today. Now a quick disclaimer, I will have the pattern in my shop as well so it is available internationally. As many of you guys asked me from the US for example or other countries if they get the opportunity to also check out that pattern. So yes it is available in my shop. The pattern uses the Buddha style pattern size guide and also the sizes that they usually have in their patterns. So obviously the pattern and the you know description and everything around it will have the Buddha style pattern size guide so that you know which size to get and because I think it's rather interesting actually I will also include a small section on how you can grade up the pattern one or two sizes because that might be of interest due to that factor. So I'm gonna show you really quickly with some offcuts right here. As you can see, there is the nest of my pattern sizes and I'm quickly gonna show you how you can actually easily grade your patterns up or down, it doesn't really matter. So you can see the corners right here. The only thing that you have to do for that, for example, if we grade up is to connect the corners with with each other so that you have a guideline like so and you want to check how far these uh, two lines are apart or you can also do it with this one right here and just add that on to that line and before you know it if you connect the dots and you do that all around your pattern piece you added an additional size just like that. So that would be size 46 already if you do that all around. So now here you would connect the sizes like so and you know since these are very close together this would be the line that you draw and then you would do that all around your pattern pieces. So I can show you here again and now here it's like a curved seam there you have it. So if that's something of interest you can go and work around the size range like that. So now let's actually get started with the pattern itself. So I already made sure to read through the instructions right here. I'm just quickly gonna go ahead and iron on interfacing. That's my fabric by the way. It looks so pretty. It has like this floral pattern on and I'm gonna use this white satin as my interlining. And I think that's gonna look really, really pretty as like a summery dress. So the first thing that we're gonna do is put the fascia fabric right on top of our interlining for our front and our back pieces. And what I like to do here is to just baste the pattern pieces around the front dividing seam right here, the pleat and then the front dividing seam here at the center front area. Everything else, meaning the side seams and the center front seam, I'm gonna leave open and as well as the hem because we're gonna finish these edges separately from each other. So the fashion fabric and the interlining will basically act as one fabric all around the neckline, the front dividing seam and so on, but act as two fabrics in the center front and also in the side seam, as well as the side seam in the back and the center back, apart from the zipper. So that's the small clue right here for these pieces. So as I said, I'm gonna baste them together here and I'll do the same for the back piece. And then for the cuffs, you can just base them on top of, you know, the one of the interlining pieces. The other one will be the facing, which lays on the inside. So you can just base all around the two pieces right here and prepare the fabric as so.
So the first thing that we're going to do for sewing is to close the dividing seams in both the front and the back piece. This is the front piece right here, so this is the neckline. You'll find a notch right here, which marks where the neckline right here starts. That's an important thing. And if you watch my trench coat video, you know how these box pleats work. You're just going to put right sides together. I'm going to start pinning right at the corner down here. And for the box pleats, you also want to go one centimeter down and one centimeter into the piece and that's where you're going to put your needle in that's where your stitching line actually sits and then i'm just going to work my way up until i reach the other notch down here just above the bust which is also going to sit at the stitching line of my like center front piece exactly here is where your notch is going to sit so one centimeter measured downwards right here that's until where you're gonna stitch. You're not gonna stitch any further than that. And the in-between can just be matched up. You're gonna find another notch down here, which you're going to match up as well. For the bust curve right here, you can either like cut to, into the seam allowance here to match it up, or like I am doing, I'm just gonna make it match up as my fabric is a teeny tiny bit elastic. And I'm gonna sew from this pin right here all the way down to here where I marked the stitching line as well. With that sewn, you're gonna turn this wrong sides facing up because now we're gonna fix the pleat together. So there is the center of the pleat and the center of the pleat needs to match up with the stitching line here on your piece. So this is exactly the same as how I made my pleats in the trench coat, by the way, which is of course still continuing on, but there just were a few things that I had to do in between, this being one of them. So right here, you wanna iron the seam allowance open, which right here at the bust curve, you probably want to cut towards the stitching line or even cut out some triangles so that it lays better. And now we can go ahead and iron the seam allowance open. I'm gonna use my tailor's hand for that so that this also looks nice from the right side. And now that this is ironed open, you actually like want to peel away the pleat here so that the stitching line that you just did is open and revealed. And then you wanna cut towards that line like this so that you can reveal the seam allowance for the pleat here and stitch along this uh, line right here. You're gonna repeat the same thing for the back piece. The curve is just a bit more prominent here, so you probably have to cut into the seam allowance here in order to you know, fit both pieces together. Apart from that, you're gonna work exactly the same with the back piece as you did with the front piece. So complete that, and then I'm gonna tell you how to put the side seam and the center front together. So now with all of that prepared, we can go ahead and close the center front seam. In the directions, it says to do the shoulder seams, but I can't find anywhere to put the center front seam together. So it seems like it would be a great thing to do now. So you're gonna put them together separately as well, the two fabrics. And what I would do here is to just start with your fashion fabric first and do right sides together. You could try to do a French seam, but um, this is the amount of space you have to actually turn everything over. So I'm just not gonna do that and do a normal seam and then just cut down the seam allowance and not even overlocking it because you're, it's gonna show. So I'm just gonna clean it by either using pinking shears or just cutting it down to like five millimeters. So I'm gonna sew right here and then I'm just gonna shove this in here and repeat the same for my interlining. Before though, I'm going to overlock the the center front seam here and here and then sew both seams together so that I can iron the seam allowance open. Okay, next up we're gonna close the shoulder seam. So we're gonna put right sides of front and back pieces together. I'm just gonna close the shoulder seam 
just like this and overlock it and iron it towards the back as I think that's the easiest and it's just gonna lay nicely and then we're gonna close the side seams separately. For the side seam I'm gonna do the same as I did for the center front. So I will be sewing the chiffon together first and then I'm gonna do the satin. So I'm gonna match up my chiffon, cut it down to five millimeters, iron it and then do my overlock seams separately and then put right sides together of my satin and sew that close as well so that I can iron my side seams open as the instructions say. So it's time already to put the zipper in. I chose this color right here. So I'm gonna put it right here until actually the zipper notch. We're gonna put the zipper in while treating the two fabric layers as one. So I'm just gonna open the zipper up and put right sides together, starting the teeth at the stitching line. So I'm gonna move it one centimeter down. I'll make sure that I know exactly where my teeth start. And then without stretching either of the two fabric or zipper I'm gonna work my way down until the zipper notch and then I'll use my zipper foot to sew the zipper in and I'll only sew until the zipper notch not any further because the section below the zipper notch is gonna get sewn together separately again so I'll only stitch until my zipper notch here from one centimeter lower than my neckline so right from the stitching line of my neckline down to the zipper notch And I can close my zipper back up and use pins to mark my zipper notch. So exactly where my zipper meets my zipper notch. I'm gonna put in a pin there. And then the same thing for my neckline. I'm gonna put a pin in so that I know exactly where like my stitching line is on my zipper. Taking the other side now, I can pin the other zipper side onto my center back. Match up the two needles at the zipper notch so that I know exactly where to position it. Same to my neckline and then I can uh, you know just add some pins in between and also sew that zipper side in. So once you close the zipper you should find a result similar to this. So the zipper is basically not visible and all of the points up here match up same as down here. So it looks really really nice and even. So now I can go ahead and close the center back seam right here. I want to cut towards the stitching line into my two fashion fabrics so that I am able to actually you know close the seam. So that's gonna be a bit tricky with my chiffon right here because it frays really badly. Like this, and now I should be able to take out my chiffon and put right sides together and close all the way up to the zipper notch as closely as I can get it. I'm gonna work with a one-sided foot so that I can get as closely to this point as possible and work my way from the hem up. Cut it down to five millimeters as I did for all of the other chiffon seams and then repeat the same for my satin right here, which I have already overlocked before sewing the zipper in. And I'll also go as far as I can towards the zipper notch. So now we're gonna do the lining and I arranged the lining already how they're gonna be put together. So basically you're just gonna close all of the seams until the center back seam and there you're only going to close until the zipper notch right here. So the only thing that you have to consider, same as we did for the shell fabric, is that you only stitch until the marked point right here. So right until here, until the stitching line. And obviously you want to close the center front seam first. So that's what I will be doing too. And then I'll work my way down to the back dividing seam and the center back until the zipper notch. Thank you. 
Okay, so now that the lining is completed, we can go ahead and put that onto the shell of the dress right here. For that, I'm gonna open the zipper all the way down. And what you just do is put right sides of your lining onto the shell of the dress. So as the lining is now also like a tube, you just put it in like this and then just align every seam of the lining with the shell. Here in the corners, we started sewing at the stitching line, so at one centimeter in. And same to the lining, so I want to like go right in there and match that up with the same point in the shell. And then continue on over the armhole and match up the shoulder seam. And then right here, you want to fold the seam allowance of your zipper outwards and then just place your lining right on top. Fold the zipper towards the side and then right on top, you want to put your lining and pin it in place. And then just go over the neckline and pin everything in place while making sure, of course, that the chiffon sits nicely right where it's supposed to so that you catch it, you know, at the correct spot. And for the zipper, you want to go all the way down to the zipper notch and just stop like a tiny bit above it as you can't really reach it down there. So the seam here you want to do with a one-sided zipper foot, otherwise you can't reach it. And you want to go somewhat closely to the zipper teeth, but not too closely so that the teeth don't catch it while zipping up. And you just want to stop like a centimeter or two centimeters above the zipper notch because you can't reach it otherwise, but obviously the lining is matching up with the shell fabric right here because it's at the same length. And then you want to repeat the same for the other side and sew the lining onto the shell. Before turning everything right sides out, I'm actually going to cut down the seam allowance at the center back where the zipper is because right here is a lot of bulk. Then I'm going to cut down the seam allowance somewhat at the corner in the front panel where the side front panel and the front panel like meet. So I can clearly see right away that I need to cut towards the stitching line here at the neck rounding, otherwise it just doesn't lay flat. And now I'm going to turn it right sides out. To pop out the edges here in the center back, I'm actually just gonna like zip up the dress. That usually does the trick. And now we can go ahead and iron the ditch of the seam towards the lining. I'm gonna start at the center back neckline. Actually, I'm gonna use a pointy tool like this to pop out the edges a tiny bit more because I don't really like how that worked. And now I'm gonna go ahead and iron this. So I just turned the whole dress wrong sides out or like insides out and I'm gonna go around and pin the lining onto the dividing seams so that I can by hand stitch the lining onto the folds right here to just make the lining stay on the inside. And for that I'm gonna use a very loose stitch so that it has some room to you know move around. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and hem the skirt. The instructions say to use a very tight zigzag stitch. I don't really want to do that. I'm going to go for a double fold, just five millimeters and top stitch it all around. And I'm going to do the same for the interlining and hem the skirt that way. So 
So I finished the ruffles here at the neckline just to try out the principle of how the ruffling uh, works. And that's what it looks like. This is the six centimeter wide ruffle. So this is quite a wide ruffle actually. And the instructions call for six centimeter and 6.5 centimeter wide strips. So I'm not quite sure if I actually wanna do six centimeters down my dividing seams right here as they go until the, you know, the pleats start. I think I'm gonna do more like four centimeters or like 4.5 and, um, you know, have the 6.5 centimeter ruffles around the hemline. And then there's also another ruffle that goes right here once the sleeve is in place. So that is what my ruffle looks like. That is uh, what I still have left which I'm sadly not gonna use. I cut out a whole bunch of the 6.5 centimeter wide uh, strips, which I'm gonna put together, right sides at the short ends, right sides together, to create one very long strip. Then I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch. This is actually one that is pretty long and pretty wide, but it's gonna, you know, since it's a bit chiffon and like super lightweight fabric here, it's just gonna eat up the fabric like this uh, with sewing, which looks really, really nice if you ask me. So this is like a super tiny, um, zigzag rolled hem more or less. So that's what I'm gonna do for all of the other ruffles as well. And then I'm gonna do a gathering stitch uh, through the middle just with a very tight setting uh, to my upper thread, which is gonna gather on its own already so that I don't have to you know, pull the gathering thread because that's gonna be a whole thing. And uh, whatever comes out of that, I'm just gonna put onto the hem. There's two rows of ruffles. And yeah, I'll repeat the same for the uh, three ruffle sections here in the center front, uh, like in the dividing seam and the center front seam here, but with a four 4.5, let's say, a centimeter wide strip. And I think I'll use the 4.5 centimeter wide one also for the uh, shoulder seam right here, like the armhole seam once I, you know, finished and put in the, uh, the sleeve. So that's that. Let's put this big thing together and actually create this right here, which looks super nice, actually. I'm super sad that I can't use this, but, you know, it is what it is. So let's create the super wide hem ruffle. So the last thing to do is the sleeve. Let's go ahead and do the slit for the sleeve. And what I like to do is actually work on my cutting surface because I can pin better. I'm gonna lay out the slit so that it is in a straight kind of way like this. And then I have my three centimeter wide strip that I need to actually finish a slit here. And I'm just gonna put it right sides on top here and pinning it onto the slit with some pins. And I'm gonna sew it at five millimeters. Now, once I reach the tip of the slit, I'm gonna go down to a millimeter of seam allowance as there is the tip and anything else would cause folds in here. So I'm just gonna go like super closely to the edge and increase the seam allowance to five millimeters again, coming towards the hem of the sleeve or not the hem, but like the cuff seam right here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and sew at five millimeters, barely reaching the tip here with just a millimeter of seam allowance. I'm gonna go ahead and iron the seam allowance towards the slit and also iron the seam allowance of the other side towards the slit so I can finish the slit completely. 
so like that and then you can fold it again right on top of your stitches and I'm gonna go ahead and pin it directly And same right here, you just want to catch the very tip of the slit to avoid any folds right here. So you're just going to pin it down like this and then continue on to the other side. And now you're going to sew very closely to that edge to fix the slit in place. So the slit opening always faces towards the back, which is, you know, the smaller of the two sides down here. So this is the right side currently. Basically what that means is once you flip the slit facing towards the inside, you want to have it lay on top of each other so that you can put your hand in from the back side, which is right here, like this. So that means that the slit facing lays normally right here. And here we have to iron the slit towards the wrong side of the fabric. And that'll lay right on top of the other side. So just like that, and that is the slit completed. Now, since we have to add a cuff, that means that the side seams have to be closed because the cuff opening is right where the slit is. That's why you put a slit in, otherwise you can't get your hand through the cuff because it's too tight. I'm gonna do French seams, which means I'm gonna put wrong sides of the sleeves side seams together first. So at five millimeters, cut the seam allowance down to three, turn everything right sides out and sew along that line again to encase the seam allowance. Obviously you can use whatever seam finishing method you like for see-through fabrics like this one. Obviously French seams are a good choice because you, like that's the best way to finish them. To make the cuffs, we have the one side that is basted together with your chiffon and then the facing piece. We're just going to put right sides together. Before we sew anything together, I uh, think it's always a good idea to iron up the seam allowance of the piece that lays on the outside. So the shell cuff in preparation as that's where it needs to be later on. And now it's just easier to do it. And now you can put right sides together with the facing of the cuff and just sew all three sides together. Before turning this right sides out, I'm gonna cut away the edges here so that that doesn't bulk up. And the seam allowance of the facing, I'm gonna cut down to five millimeters. Now I'm going to start turning this right sides out and I'm going to use a tool to pop out the edges like that. And let's iron the seam so that the ditch of the seam is only visible on the facing side. It's kind of a bit tricky for this pattern. The facing is actually the same pattern as the shell. Uh, therefore, it's the same size. So this can be a bit tricky to iron it correctly, just like that. And that's the cuff almost done. We're not going to add the buttonholes now because it's not as easy to sew the cuff onto the sleeve. So let's actually sew the cuff onto the sleeve. I'm going to add a gathering stitch from one side of the slit all the way to the other side, which I'm then going to gather to the size of the cuff to sew it onto the sleeve. And now I can go ahead and arrange it so that it looks pretty as well. And the gathers are distributed evenly around the cuff like that. And what I like to do for sewing the cuffs on is actually do wrong sides together first. So I'm going to put my facing onto the wrong side of my cuff seam here in the sleeve. And now I can fold the seam allowance into the cuff and just cover the stitches that I just did. And I'm gonna stitch very closely to that edge to fix the cuff in place. 
And now for the side where we ironed the slit facing inwards, that's where we're gonna put our buttonholes. So there are some placements written right there. So I'm just gonna copy that and go over to my sewing machine to put the buttonholes in. And to sew the sleeve into the dress itself, you're gonna find two points on either side of the sleeve cap, which you need to gather in between. So that's what I'm gonna do as well. And then you're gonna gather to fit the armhole of your actual dress. The last step is to then add another set of ruffles into the seam right there. And then the dress is done, so let's do that. And last but not least, we're gonna add the ruffles to the shoulder seam. So what I think is best for there is to just overlap like the ends like this. So it's gonna go to somewhat of a point. It's more like a round end, but I think this looks pretty. I'm gonna attach that starting where the ruffles start, or I'm gonna start at the back dividing seam. I think that would look pretty. And then I'm just gonna do that underneath the sewing machine, but I'm gonna work my way probably towards where, you know, the sleeve kind of stops laying to the side, but goes straight down. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. It was such a nice project to work on because, you know, I designed the dress, but I wasn't involved in the pattern making, which is very rare for me as a pattern maker. So that was super unique, a very nice experience. And I am super happy with the outcome I already had been when I was shooting the dress because, you know, I already saw the, the dress that I had envisioned. Uh, basically, it just came to life and that was really fun, but it was also super super exciting to, you know, change up the color scheme, not do this kind of, it looked more wedding-y kind of dress, which was beautiful, but more do a summery dress, like a fun dress with these pastel colors and these flowers and stuff like that. I think that looks really, really pretty. Like, honestly, this is probably one of the prettiest dresses I own, which is rare to say from me, coming from me, uh, because usually I don't necessarily like or like love my self-made clothes as I see all the mistakes and stuff which is such a bad thing I know but you know it it is what it is anyways that was such a nice experience and I hope you're gonna have a joyful experience working on this very special pattern as well as I said before link to the pattern is in the description down below the English version and it's like for international customers open obviously as all of my patterns are so check the link in the description to support me if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that I post I post on Sundays so you can keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, go check out my socials. Links to that are in the description box down below. I am doing tips and tricks and hacks, sewing hacks and stuff, so that might be of interest to you. And as I said before, check out my Etsy store to support me directly. You'll find all the patterns that I show here on my channel over there on my Etsy store as digital downloads, so check that out to directly support me and my brand and this channel, everything you know the drill. A special thanks to my channel members. Here you can get exclusive benefits through the link in the description down below so check that out as well and with that thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna see you next sunday bye guys